Hey there everybody, welcome back. It's time for me to show you another technique. Today I'm really excited to show you how to make chameleon cells in an acrylic pour. So I'm using silicone oil to make the cells, but I am not mixing it into my colors. I'm going to be adding it in later. It makes a really dramatic, unique effect. So you will see how I do that later. So all of my paints are mixed with Floetrol and water. It's about a one part paint to two parts Floetrol mix. And then thinned until they get to a nice sort of medium thin consistency. And my purple is probably the worst to show you the consistency because it's kind of gloppy. Even though it's the same thickness, it just doesn't flow as well. But so there we've got a nice, nice medium thin flow. Um, so I've got purple pansy, which is this nice dark purple. I have phthalo red instead of my metallic magenta. I have um, primary yellow, um, what is this one called? Turquoise. It's a nice blue-green. And then I have some Caribbean blue here, which I'm adding to this color scheme for today, and a little bit of white as well, which I believe is what I'm going to be swiping over the colors with. Okay, so for chameleon cells, the first thing you need to do is to get your paint on the canvas and then swipe it so that the colors stack over each other. So I'm going to lay out in stripes going diagonally, and then I'm gonna swipe horizontally with white, and then I will use a toothpick and the silicone oil to make those cells. All right, let's go. Um, let me move these colors out of the way and I am layering them kind of in their rainbow order. So I'm gonna start, and I'm swiping with this piece of laminator sheet plastic. You can tell it's been well used. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the turquoise green here across the middle. Um, and going this direction, I'll do yellow, and then the phthalo red, which is this lovely bright magenta color. Okay, so there's one half done, and now I'm gonna go the other direction, but with the same sort of color stacking. <laughs> All right. Um, now I'm going to quickly touch up these edges just so that all the sides and edges are covered. Okay, so that took a while, <laughs> but all of my edges are neatly covered, or pretty neatly covered, and I'm ready to do my swipe. Okay, so for the swipe, instead of putting a line of color on the painting, I'm going to put it right on my swipe tool. So. I just want a thin, thin line of white paint here. 
If it's too thick, then it'll make tons of white over the colors, which I don't want. Um, I just want a little bit of contrast and something to start blending the colors. Okay. So I got white on that side, so I'm going to flip it over and just touch it carefully to the edge and start pulling it back nice and slow and controlled. All right. You know what's crazy? I'm getting cells pop up. Why on earth is that happening? That's wild. I wasn't intending for that to happen. I wonder if one of my colors of paint is particularly reactive. It may be. Anyway, it looks like it's the purple that's doing it. That purple pansy, it's just apple barrel paint, but it may be a nice reactive paint. That would be a good one to know about. There are certain ones that just seem to make cells more easily than other colors. Okay, well this is a pretty effect already, but I definitely want to get some chameleon cells happening. So what I'm going to do here is I've just got a little plastic lid and I'm going to put some silicone oil into it, just enough that I can dip a toothpick in. And I'm going to start down here and make a, a line of cells going this way. Because I want to make a, a grid. I don't have a comb. You can use a comb or something to make different, um, different designs with your chameleon cells. But I'm just going to use a toothpick. And I'm re-dipping every few ones that I poke. All right, so I'm seeing a line of cells come up here. These ones are pretty pale. I think it's because they had the heaviest coat of white over top of them. Let's see how these next ones do. Okay, so I'm thinking here, this is making a really pretty effect. I like the white in between. It's very dramatic. I really love these purple cells. So I'm thinking I'm going to make chameleon cells around them, but not across them. I'll just see how that looks with these bands of kind of the natural purple cells amid the grid of rainbow cells. It might look terrible and I'll end up going back over them but that's what I'm going to try. Okay, just in case you can't tell what I'm doing over here, um, after every four or five, I'm, I'm wiping the paint off the toothpick and then re-dipping back in the silicone. That way, I'm not getting really muddy paint colors in the center of my chameleon cells. I don't think it makes a huge difference, 
but it's what I'm doing. And as you do it, you're not just dripping silicone on, you're actually poking it down through the layers of the paint so that it can open up layers of the paint that is below the surface. If you just drip silicone onto the surface of a painting, it won't do anything. You have to get it down inside. So the toothpick pokes it down to the bottom layer where then it can start opening up. So whatever to tool you use, whether that's a comb or a toothpick or a bundle of pencils or I've seen all different kinds. You just want something that's going to poke down through that top layer of paint. Whew! Okay. So I'm trying to decide if I like having these purple bits throughout, and I think I do. Um, but up here at the top, where the cells didn't grow quite so much, I think I'm going to come in and add another layer of cells. I don't know. I gotta think about that. Because if I do, you'll be able to tell that there will be more cells. Hmm. Let me try in just a couple places and see how it looks. Well, this effect is super, super cool, and what's also cool is when I swiped it across, some color has trickled down over the sides. Let me check front. Okay, so that's got pretty much white on that side. So the sides that I was so careful to neatly make, you know, the stripes, it didn't end up needing to be like that. So that's great. I'm happy about that. <laughs> Thrilled with this effect. It's a really cool way of getting some bizarre cell patterns. So, yeah. I can't wait to show you a close-up. I do want to say, when you, if you do a painting like this, when you go to varnish it, you gotta make sure that you clean it really, really well. Because this used tons of silicone. And I'll try to show you a video of this when it's dry so you can see the little drops of oil in the center of each cell and that has to be cleaned up thoroughly before you varnish so that is the one downside of this technique it uses a lot of silicone and so it's harder to clean but you can't really get this effect from pretty much any other technique so let me give you a close-up okay so just look at how perfect and multicolored those cells are. And I love I love those swaths of the natural purple cells. I feel like it makes it look like an actual lizard skin or something with patches of different textures. But let me just show you those cells. So those are multicolored you can see the different layers of where the paint stacked on top of each other as I swiped it across. So very, very cool. And then it looks really neat with just the plain white here in between the cells. So I love pretty much every, every facet of this pour. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope this has inspired you to try out your own chameleon cells. And come on back to my channel and check out some other techniques. See you next time. Okay, so the painting is dry and I just wanted to show you how much oil there is on the surface. Can you see that? It looks like the paint is wet. But that is from the silicone oil accumulating on the surface. So chameleon cells is definitely one that you really, really have to clean before you do varnish or anything.